God be with you, and welcome to St. James the Apostle Church in Perth, Ontario, Canada, as we hear God's word and offer our prayers and praise on this second Sunday after Pentecost, or the 6th of June, in the year of our Lord, 2021. We welcome all our members and friends worshiping with us wherever you may be. I'm delighted to have with us uh, today our new summer intern, Mr. Bob Albert. And I want to say a special hello this morning to Mary and Fred Brownlee, to Heather Budgel, and to Eva Bucher. You'll find the order of service in, and our readings for this day in our, our, uh, on our website, stjamesperth.ca, and in our weekly parish email. And if you'd like to be added to that email, please just let us know. We're grateful for every opportunity to worship and connect with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. <clears throat> Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us observe 215 seconds of respectful silence as we honor the indigenous children whose bodies were found in Kamloops, British Columbia, and whose lives matter very much.
Holy One, creator of all that is, seen and unseen, of story and of song, of heartbeat and of tears, of bodies, souls, voices, and all relations. You are the God of all truth and the way of all reconciliation. Breathe in us the grace to trust in your loving forgiveness, that we may face our histories with courage. Give us with holy wisdom to enter through the gates of remorse that our feet may walk gently and firmly on the way of justice and healing. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, you have assured the human family of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, your sons do not follow your ways. Appoint for us, then, a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they had done to me from the day that I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only, they shall solemnly, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. He will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipment for, of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will, make, he will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officials and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day but the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, but we are demanding to have a king over us, so that we may also be like the other nations, and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the psalm appointed for today is Psalm 138. We will say it responsibly. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will, I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perseveres the haunty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. 
The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. But just as we have the same spirit of faith, that in accordance with the scripture, I believe, and so I spoke, we also believe, and we speak. Because we know that one that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of the Lord. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not to what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For you know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain Jesus, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided... He cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin, for they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Loving God, grant each of us a word from your word. In your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the latest... uh, of the creative and uplifting emails that our secretary Brenda sends out week by week. Uh, We read this week, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Part of Psalm 37. I want you to hang on to that verse because it speaks to what Jesus says about family and what he does himself. In our gospel reading for today, Mark has established Jesus as a prophet, a teacher, and a healer. He casts out unclean spirits, and and he's already appointed 12 apostles to aid him in his work, the first members of the extended family to which you and I belong. And today we're confronted by what he did and said And the kind of reactions he received from crowds of strangers, those in authority, and even 
his own family. In Jesus' day, as in ours, the needs of the world are or can seem overwhelming. So by going before us and then calling us to follow him, Jesus invited us into the fray and showed us how not to be overwhelmed. And he showed us that some of the implications uh, of answering that call to be Jesus' body in the world, in our time and in our place, are, well, we may face opposition from those who oppose our efforts or, or hope that sheer inertia will keep us from changing the status quo. And our own families might think we are beside ourselves with too much work done for the sake of people who aren't even our family or members of our church family. So what's up with that? We know that Jesus worked to free people, the children of God, from all that darkens and ensnares us. It wasn't social service work, per se, though people were fed, they were healed, barriers were broken down, and community was formed. It was direct and powerful, and lives were changed by it, so much so that in uh, early in Jesus' ministry, people were willing to walk dozens, some as many as 150 miles uh, and many days just to see him and touch him and be touched by him. He was good news. Even if some in authority thought him a threat or were jealous of his temporary popularity. Unlike the models of kings, uh, that were such an ominous novelty to Israel in our first reading for today, and the ways even today that a leader can be tempted to operate with their own best interests and reputations in mind. Jesus showed us that disciples of his are called to be servants, and servants of the kingdom of God. We may bear the name of the king and be uh, deputized and called his ambassadors. We may be his voice and his hands and his feet in the world, but we are not called to fulfill our desires or our needs or get puffed up by our calling, but simply to do his will for the well-being of others. And Jesus' definition of those who we are called to help is rather surprising. He taught us a new definition of family of mothers and brothers and sisters, and of neighbors as well. Now Jesus is rather seen uh, working close to home or nearby his family. He's on the road almost all the time. But today we get a rare glimpse of Jesus who actually acting close to home in our gospel reading. Now I expect that we would all agree that then as now, the importance of family was and is a huge shared value among us. To have someone say of any of us, he or she would do anything for their family is considered high praise. And, and though that might be hard to do, some would say that doing things for family first should be our highest priority. But is it a claim to fame? This week I heard someone facetiously call the comedian Chris Rock that well-known theologian uh, because Chris Rock had said in a routine once, you know, your family looks just like you. You're supposed to do everything in your power to provide for them. It's your job. And if that's what you're doing, you're nothing special. When we see our Lord Jesus finally come close to home, near his blood relatives, um, he doesn't get to do very much for or with them. And with all that he's doing, Mark says, they agree with the crowd. They, they think he is out of his mind and needs to be taken in hand. Elsewhere, of course, Jesus will say that a prophet is not without honor except among his own people. And Jesus goes on to say something about family that seems to contradict what most of us would say about how important our immediate family is or ought to be. So maybe this is not a great text for Mother's Day or Family Day. 
And Jesus didn't talk about this part, but we know only too well of the damage that has been done to so many in and by members of their families. There are people listening today who carry around the words, uh, the wounds that they may uh, try successfully or not so successfully to hide, which were inflicted by a family member. But Jesus doesn't say that family isn't important or couldn't be better, nor does he say it's just your job, like Chris Rock. Jesus never says that the ideal care which everyone should expect from family isn't an ideal. Indeed, I think you can read Scripture and find many instances in which we are called to rise closer to that ideal. It's just that our Lord's view of who is and should be related to him and to us and who has a claim on his and our care is larger than we ever thought before. Caring for those who love you and whom you love should be a given. Then our Lord and his church want us to expand our view and have a larger idea of family. It's like our families are supposed to be a practice ground or an elementary education on how to care for others, and then we extend it to others because we know what family means. He teaches us through baptism that even those of us with the greatest and largest of families need more. So for the last 2,000 years, we have been growing into the reality that we need the gifts and community of a much larger family, whose initial connection to us is only the fact that we are all related through Jesus and our baptism. And Jesus goes even further in saying that his family is anyone who does his will in serving others. I think we saw that in Perth and in this parish family back in 2015, when people were moved to help refugees from the horrific situation in Syria so they could come and make a safe and lasting home with us here in Perth. These people are now our neighbors and our friends and our relatives in a new way. Now I call that effort uh, of almost six years ago now a cause celeb. It was in the news, it was popular, and it was heralded by our Prime Minister, and we were called to do something collectively, so that so many people wanted to give of their time and their money in very generous ways. But a funny thing happens when the need is closer to home. I heard a song on the radio, uh, the Christian radio station, uh, I think out of Kingston or Ottawa, where someone says, we're great at mission work halfway around the world, but we're reluctant to cross the street sometimes. A funny thing happens when the need is closer to home. It's not exotic anymore, nor does it seem to get nationwide news coverage, you know, stuff that's just happening in your own town. It's not a cause celeb. It's just a need of someone that God is calling us to serve. So lately, David Kretsch and our outreach committee and I have been struggling to find people to help us form the steering committee for our affordable housing initiative. People need it, and though we might not see a picture of a dead homeless person on the corner of Foster and Gore, the damage being done to the lives of children and adults on account of housing insecurity cannot be gainsaid. Indeed, lots of people tell us they agree, they see the need, and they like our idea and think it's a good one. And some have even pledged to donate something, but no one has come forward or agreed when we asked them to join us in the hard work of organizing the campaign and getting the first property renovated and expanded to increase our affordable housing stock here in Perth. That's why we are still praying and making phone calls. Jesus calls us and others to do more as members of his household by baptism 
and by choosing to seek and do his will for others. And time and again, we have been shown a still more excellent way to act. A pastor I often uh, listen to likes to tell the story of trying to teach his, um, one of his early men's prayer breakfast groups about what baptism meant. <clears throat> Excuse me. He asked the group to pray for him uh, on a particular day because he'd been called to a local jail where a 17-year-old son of a strike, struggling single mom in the congregation was being held on uh, drinking and driving charges. It was not the first time uh, or the first sign of this young man's problem with alcohol. And his mother was overwhelmed and didn't know what to do. So the pastor, as he tells it, told his prayer, breakfast, uh, prayer group that after the meeting he was going down to the jail to see this young man called Johnny, and he was asking them to pray for him. To his surprise, one man in the group spoke up and said, Pastor, no offense, but what do you know about alcoholism? Because I know rather a lot about it from years of experience, so I'd like to go with you. And then another member spoke up and said, you know, I feel sorry for that young mother and I want to help. I'm coming too. And then the other one said, I'm coming with you also. And in the end, four of them went down that uh, dark hallway uh, to a dank cell uh, at the back of this, uh, this holding facility um, uh, to visit that 17-year-old. The pastor said um, he saw Johnny crying in the corner and he looked more like a six-year-old. And then he started to say to Johnny, we are from the church, and we're here for you, and we want you to know we care about you. But almost as the words were out of his mouth, he was pushed aside by one of those men who came with him, and, uh, and they said, uh, Johnny, what did they tell you it would take to get you out of here? And the boy said, well, they say the bail is $2,000. And the elder said, well, we'll take care of that. Another stepped forward and said, Johnny, how long have you been an alcoholic? guess they're not shy in this man's parish. And, uh, and the young man said, well, I, I don't think I am an alcoholic. And the elder said, and how long have you been lying to yourself about that? Johnny, I don't know much about a lot of things, but I know a whole lot about this disease, and I can help you escape. And then the third man chimed in and said, you know, your mom needs a break, and we have a nice spare room in our house, so when we get you out of here, you can come and stay with us for a while, and we'll see what we can do to put things back together. Now before they left the station that day, their pastor said, this is baptism. And today God has used you to teach me about what happens any time and every time we receive someone into this family through baptism. Now I don't know about you, but it might seem uh, that, uh, that this is a simple or simplistic uh, or even a rather paternalistic kind of story. But there are so many of these stories in so many communities of disciples, like that pastor's and like ours here at St. James, that they are too numerous to tell. The point is what our stories say, as Jesus called and modeled for us to do, about who we are and who we can be as a Christian family with maybe nothing in common except Jesus and our baptism into the household of God. Years ago, a family joined the church I was serving. They were from South Africa, and they were allowed to bring furniture and clothing, but almost no money with them. The mom was a brilliant seamstress, and years later would make me the only chasuble I have ever owned. And the dad helped me create some rather ingenious beloved toys that I made for my sons at Christmas. Ask me about them sometime. They seemed to me like a gentle, middle-class uh, family, homeowners who had just changed addresses to end up in our neighborhood. They invited me to dinner as kind of my, my parish newcomer visit with them, and I noticed that the entire meal was cooked on an electric frying pan that sat on a dysfunctional stove. Dysfunctional because the appliances they had could not be connected to Ontario gas and electrical services. They had bought the house 
on a power of sale for next to nothing, and they used everything else they had to winterize the house by hand and to prepare enough rooms for the family to be comfortable over the winter, and that's all. She told me uh, in passing that she would like nothing more than to cook a Thanksgiving meal, a full Thanksgiving meal for her family in their new home, but I wondered how you'd do that with an electric frying pan. Now it turned out that in our congregation uh, there was someone who worked for the gas company. Someone else knew where they could buy a stove at a good price, and the congregation's outreach committee had set aside money for a refugee family and raised more than was needed that year. So together, we lied. And we said, we just happened to come into possession of a brand new gas stove, and we just happened to know someone who would be happy to drop by on the Friday of Thanksgiving weekend and hook it up. Oh, and I think a turkey and some other wonderful uh, things wonderfully materialized that weekend also. They were blown away. And they would never have known how to or been comfortable asking their new church for help. But that's what they received. And I know this is uh, only one of many examples. I know that it's not just me in this parish family of ours, uh, but that there are people right here at St. James who would respond to a late night phone call, go to help someone in need, or just take the call and uh, talk things over with them, or make some kind of financial sacrifice to help someone in need, someone with whom we have no blood connections, someone you and I are not related to in any way, except through Jesus. The last time I spoke about the need that the people in Perth could be helped out of, uh, just after Christmas, by our friends at the table, members of this parish stepped up to help, so much so that I was blown away when I walked into a board meeting, actually a fundraising committee meeting, and people were talking about the response of the members of St. James in Perth. So it is that our Lord says of us, here are my mother and sisters and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Now here again, those encouraging words Brenda shared with us this week, not knowing what the sermon would be about. The Lord makes firm the steps of one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Amen. And now let us confess our faith as we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> And now we're going to do the first part of the rite of commissioning of a student in the theological internship program in the Diocese of Ottawa. 
as we begin to welcome our intern, Bob Albert. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are all baptized by the same Spirit into one body. We are given many gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. As a faith community, we always strive to spread the word and help each other discern our gifts. So for the next three months, we're called to a special and privileged ministry as a teaching church. We are designated by our diocese to help Mr. Bob Albert further discern his vocation and readiness for ordained ministry. Our purpose now is to recognize and affirm our internship ministries. People, are preparing, uh, people preparing for ordained ministry in the Diocese of Ottawa complete a thorough academic program that includes the study of scripture, liturgy, theology, Christian ethics, liturgy, uh, uh, and, and pastoral studies. They are also expected to complete a theological internship program. The internship is an opportunity for students to experience ministry in a way that provides oversight and feedback to help him in a, uh, find a healthy balance in his own needs and, and the needs of the people of God. I now um, introduce uh, Bob. During his in internship, he will be active in a variety of ministries. He will go with me uh, to some places in the parish, and he will go on my behalf and yours to others. Bob. You have been studying and preparing for ordained ministry. Our diocese has asked our incumbent to be your supervisor and work with you to help you understand and appreciate the call to ordained ministry. <clears throat> our rector, the Reverend Kenneth Davis, is arranging a wide variety of experiences and ministries for you. Will you, as long as you are engaged in this ministry, perform it with care to the honor of God, the benefit of the church, and the hope of the kingdom. I will. Will you work cooperatively with your supervisor and others designated to assist you throughout your internship? I will. Kenneth, you have been asked to be the supervisor for Bob during his internship. Our diocese has designated you in this role because you demonstrate maturity and the gifts needed to guide an intern in their vocational discernment and readiness for ministry. Will you conscientiously work with the intern and others involved in the internship to ensure it achieves the goals of helping Bob understand and appreciate the ministry to which he feels called? I will. Will you make your best effort to guide Bob by words and deeds throughout his internship? I will. Bob is to be guided and assisted in this time at St. James by a learning assessment group. On Wednesday, God willing, we will be commissioning Sue Sams, Jackie Morris, John Price, and Margot Smith and Wally Kuzmitz to this important ministry group. At the same time, over Zoom, I will, we will ask the whole parish family to accept our role and ministry as a teaching church and to help Bob discern his vocation and prepare for ordained ministry. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your grace alone we are called and accepted into your service. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit and make us worthy of our calling to assist our diocese in the teaching church ministry to prepare pastors for the years ahead. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of grace and God of glory, on your people pour your power. Now fulfill your church's story, bring its power to glory.
we offer ourselves and these gifts, gifts sent in by our members and friends in the mail, uh, at, our, at our door here at the church, and in electronic means, we pray, merciful God and Father, in Adam's fall we were born to death, in the new Adam we are reborn to life. In all we offer you this day, may we share a taste of your eternal kingdom, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer, saying, Hear our prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. Unify us in service of the gospel, that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Today, we join Anglicans around the world to pray for the Church of the Province of Myanmar. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us, and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration, when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. We pray for openness to hear God's word and to respond to God's call. We pray for Justin of Canterbury Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Shane, our bishop, Kenneth, our priest, and our wardens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in need. Encourage those who have begun to lose their heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. In our diocesan family, we pray for the parish of St. Columba, in Ottawa, the Reverend Karen Coxon. For St. Barnabas Deep River, the Reverend Patrick Stevens. And for St. Barnabas Ottawa, Canon Stuart Murray. We give thanks for the birthday of our own Reverend Ken. We ask God's blessing on Linda, on Leanna, as she assists in the administration of vaccines in Perth. And we pray for all the members of our parish and for all who are worshiping with us remotely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. We pray for Elizabeth, our queen, and all in authority, for Justin, our prime minister, and all striving to keep us safe and well, including all hospital staff, all frontline workers, all first responders, all business owners and their staff, the staff of all retirement and nursing homes, those administering the new vaccine, and all teachers and students. We pray that God would prosper our affordable housing initiative and move the hearts of many in Perth to support it and volunteer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We pray for all who are in need of God's help and care, including the Reverend William Bill Simmons, the Reverend Jonathan Asquith, John and Isabel Purden and family, Francis, Diane, Donald, Sam and Pat, Penny and family, Ted, Robert, Patsy, Ron, Lori, Linda, Karen, David, Joanne, Wendell, Lisa, Ken, Emmett, Janil, Robin, Terry, Peter, Jenna, Terry, Cindy, 
Betty, Janet, John and Hillary, Shirley, Peggy, Maureen, Mary, Jimmy, Robert, Mary, Cheryl, Jeff, Helen, Junie, Heather, Shelley, Bet, Colette, Adam, Stephen, and others who are in our hearts today. We pray for all who are sick in quarantine and self-isolating, and for those who are afraid. We pray for the repose of the soul of Bill Pardon and his family, and we commend Diane Graves to God, and we pray for comfort for Donald Graves, and we also commend the soul of Jeffrey Michael Greer, and we ask for prayers for Ken and Patty and all the Greer family. We ask also for prayers for all those who may have passed in, in the last night. We commend to God the lost and unacknowledged children who died in residential schools and all who are newly grieving across the country right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Know that you are beloved of God and members of his family and that he would have his grace extend to more and more. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today. I give thanks to be serving with Peter Woodwork and Garrett Jansen Van Beek, Jane Harton, John Price, Bob Albert, and Samuel Davis. I also give thanks for members of the parish who have agreed to serve on Bob's learning assessment group, which we'll be meeting later this morning. Everyone is invited, as John said, in our commissioning right to, um, to meet Bob uh, virtually uh, and to share in an, an additional act of his welcome into the parish this Wednesday night on Zoom. And the link for that Zoom meeting is in the, uh, the email you got on Friday. And uh, if you don't have that, just call the office and, and Brenda can send it out to you. Uh, tonight, Sunday, June 6th at 7 p.m., we're invited by our national indigenous bishop, Mark McDonald, to join with others in a sacred circle of prayer and ceremony, as he says, as we practice what we call gospel-based discipleship. Placing the gospel in the center of the sacred circle, it is our way to move from institution to relationship. We join as relatives in good news, as relatives to all, and mourning 215 children. The Zoom invitation and the link to that meeting are on our parish website, stjamesperth.ca. Now, this would also normally be what we once called Food Bank Sunday. That food collection hasn't been possible during the pandemic, although I told you about that wonderful incident that occurred after Christmas in the sermon. And I wanted you to know, once again, that two donors have come forward in Perth, 
and they've offered a combined matching donation of $15,000 so that any donation made to the Table Community Food Center uh, between now and Canada Day will be doubled to uh, the maximum of another 15000 So that's a $30,000 potential gift for our friends at the table. I commend that to you. And finally, uh, we look for our summer parish mailing, which is to go out now at the beginning of this week uh, for news, for resources, for prayer and service over the summer until we can be back together again for in-person worship. We look forward to worshiping with you here again God willing, next Sunday. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.